Dear Ms. Kugel, dear EMPA graduates, incoming students, alumni, dear families, friends, dear board members, faculty and staff, and of course, dear guests. Welcome to the opening of the academic year 2016-2017. I always think of this joint event, the EMPA graduation ceremony and inauguration as a great opportunity for the entire Hurti community to come together and to get to know each other. On the one hand, we're welcoming incoming students, as well as those returning from the internships, from exchange programs for professional years. On the other hand, we are also bidding farewell to our graduates who have successfully completed their studies at a school and are now moving on to new or old endeavors. As to the incoming cohort, uh, we now have 256 new students coming from 46 different countries here at the school, and it's the largest cohort that we ever welcomed to the school. This includes 125 MPP students, 56 students in the Master of International Affairs, 32 exchange students, 11 dual degree students, 23 EMPA students, and nine PhD students. And for a school that is not that old, starting in 2003, 2004, with just 25 students, this is indeed remarkable progress. As you start your studies here at the Hertie School, some of you may have very precise ideas of your careers that you're coming to pursue, and others may not be quite sure what they will end up doing after two years or three years with us. But you should know that our graduates now number over 1,100. We have 1,100 alumni, and you find them in every sector of the world and in every corner of the world as well. And it goes without saying that we also expect our new graduates to become part of this alumni network. Don't become strangers, just remain connected with the school. You'll find that it's worthwhile for you and for the school. So speaking of alumni, today is also the occasion to say farewell to 21 EMPA graduates, and they come from six different countries. I think we should all have a round of applause for our graduates today. What I always find so remarkable about the executive uh, students at the Hertie schools, so those now graduating from the EMPA program, is that they have to juggle and manage to uh, so many different um, challenges. And uh, they, you know, there is work, because many of them work while they study here. There is study, there is travel, there is family, and all of that is quite a big chore. And uh, I always admire how you uh, do that. In addition, you come here for lectures and you contribute in so many other ways to the school. And I'm very, very grateful uh, for you uh, to do that. You contribute to the student magazine, the Governance Post. You uh, organize lecture series. That's really, really good. And as we saw last night, for those of you who had a chance to, uh, to be here, we had a very first master thesis poster presentations down in uh, the cafeteria. They're still there, I think. Uh, if you have a chance, you may well look at them. They're really, really interesting. And you saw the range of topics that are covered by the EMPA graduates and with great skill and knowledge. It, we had a, a jury, and the jury had to select the three best posters. It was a tough job, uh, I was told. But they came up with uh, three winners, and it's my great pleasure to announce that Ulrike Friedrich with a thesis on how to improve the coordination capacity of the German Federal Environment Agency won first prize. So really well done, uh, Ulrike. The second. <laughs> and the second place uh, was Lars uh, Büchner's thesis uh, looking at how at the future of a mining region just south of the city and what the options are by facing out of coal mining. And congratulations to, to you too, Lars. Yeah. 
And the third place, but uh, I said it's really not meant as third place, it's just the third first place, that's the way to look at it, uh, goes to Sophie Fusses for nudging impossible opportunities, chances and risk of an application of nudging in a ministry in the state of North Rhine-Westphalia. Congratulations to you once more. And last night, of course, we had a talk exactly on that topic. So on this note, let me also thank the, uh, the speaker, the EMPA student speaker, Marius uh, Thomas Walter. We'll hear him in a, uh, in a couple of minutes' time, but I just wanted to say uh, how grateful you are that you took on that role on relatively short notice. So, dear graduates, let me extend my warmest welcome to you all. I wish you the very best in the future. And I'd also like to thank, at this moment, the entire EMPA team for their hard work and dedication to make sure that the EMPA runs smoothly. And for those of you joining us, you will also know that we as a relatively young and um, active and agile institution just founded uh, in 2003, we continue to grow not only in student numbers, but also in the size of our faculty. Of course, the two go in tandem. As of this academic year, we have 26 core faculty members at the Hertie School. And I'm delighted to welcome our new faculty members today who will join us in the course of the new academic year. Uh, first, we have Bashak Shali. She's joining us as Professor of International Law as of this semester, and Bashak was the director of the Center for Global Public Law at Koch University in Istanbul. She's also the Secretary General of the European Society of International Law. I mention that because that's the very reason Bajak is not here today, because as the Secretary General, she has to oversee the meetings of that society which are taking place today in Riga. We also welcome uh, Jochen Krasen, who joins us as Professor of Public Policy for the academic year 2016-2017. He's a Professor of Comparative Social Policy at the University of Edinburgh. Welcome, Jochen. Finally, not finally actually, we also welcome Julian Wucherfennig, who joins us as Assistant Professor of International Affairs and Security. He was previously Program Director for Security Studies at University College London and a Postdoc Fellow at ETH Zurich. And now finally, uh, Luciana Gingolani is an incoming Assistant Professor of Public Administration and she is currently a postdoc here at the school, and previously she worked for UNDP, the OECD, and the French Development Agency. So, these are some news about the school, and without further ado, let me now welcome and introduce today's commencement speaker, Janina Kuhl. She is Chief Human Resources Officer and member of the Managing Board of Siemens, She's globally responsible for the areas of human resources, diversity, environmental health and safety, and corporate social responsibility. Before her current post, she served as Chief Human Resources Officer for OSRAM and held various leadership positions in Siemens in Germany, Italy, and China. Prior to joining Siemens, Janina Kugel worked several years in management consulting with Accenture, and at that time, she was responsible for re-engineering, restructuring, and organizational design. She's a member of the Practice Council here at Hertie School. She's also a member of the University Council at Ingolstadt and member of the board of the Siemens Foundation. She earned a Master's of Economics from the Universities of Mainz and Verona. Ms. Kugel, thanks for joining us today. We all look forward to hearing your speech on working in the digital age, shape, lead, and win. Ms. Google, thank you. So when I came in, I looked at the stage and I thought, okay, so I can see it's back being in the good old times of academia. And then I was told, no, there's a handheld micro so I can move, which is a little bit more to what I'm used to do. So I hope you forgive me for moving. Um, I think in, that's what I wanted to bring to you, to those of you that are graduating and are going to hit in a new professional stage, and those of you that are starting here at the Hertie School, because we're very often discussing really what is actually driving the youth, what is driving us as a business, what is driving the governance and societies, 
and just having a little bit of a look, what is happening in the world that we call a digital world, when we talk about industry 4.0, people 4.0, and everything becomes 4.0, and what would I like to take you with you and think about when you're going into your next stage? Does someone know these gentlemen? Okay, does someone know younger than 30, these gentlemen? Okay. This has been most probably the first ever pop band that became a global star. These are the Beatles. But you know what was said when they were starting and just like, you know, playing in a garage and looking for someone that would actually become their label record? It was said, we don't like their sound and guitar music is on the way out. They had a really hard time to find someone that they were choosing their music, and we all know what happened with them. This picture is kind of a fun picture, it always at least amuses me. But there has been a really very known gentleman, David Riesman, an American social scientist, who in 1967 said one thing, if anything remains more or less unchanged, it will be the role of women. Well, obviously, I can personally tell you he was not right. And I think there is quite a lot of women sitting here in that room and men that know he hasn't been right. And still, why am I showing you this? Because there is always a time when the current society and the current generations are of a strong belief that nothing is going to change. And a few days later, we always figure out things do change. These used to be kind of computers. And there was someone said there said, there's no reason anyone would want a computer in their home. Now when you look at the capacity of those computers on that picture, this is pretty much what a smartphone can do today. And if I'm counting the number of devices and computers that most probably is existing in every household, we know also that has not exactly been true. So think about it. When we are sitting now here together and we are trying to deny what is going to happen in the future, what comes there with digitization, wishing the good old times back, that sometimes the world is turning faster than we believe. And what I would hope for you, for the next generation, that's also the hope that I have in our company, that you keep that open-mindedness forever and forever, and that you're questioning yourself when you're becoming a little bit older and thinking, oh no, that's not going to happen. The new generation is just wrong. Because that's what reality looks today. I mean, there's always that joke, and especially on social media, that if you give a two-year-old toddler a newspaper, you know, the movement that they do is... Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know whether that's exactly leading us where we would like to go, but still, that is reality. Not always in every country, but still, already, Kids in school, in the elementary school, are getting into a digital world. And very often, people also have that idea that their career is going to look like that. And I'm looking here at the first two rows. Maybe some of you have that idea. And I can tell you that most probably, your career is going to look like that. Because in everything that is happening, being very fast, digital, um, global business, whatever, most probably, having that obviously always steady, having always control about complexity in everything that is going on, is not going to be the case. But don't worry. Because what actually also brings that is that there's a lot of opportunities where things are going to happen that you would have never been predicting today. And then maybe in a year from now, everything looks completely different. And that's what I want you to always remember because sometimes people are getting a little bit frightened if they make a move somewhere else, if they try out something new. I know that now in the Hurtie School, there's a lot of people that have experienced already many different things. But that's pretty normal, and I think many of us will actually have to get used to that fact that careers don't look like that, that life does not always look like that, and that also growth does not always look in a steady, straight line. What does it actually mean also to jobs? There is going to be a lot of jobs, that do exist today, that won't be relevant anymore in roughly 10 years, and there's going to be jobs that are not relevant anymore in five years from now. 
if my grandmother would still be alive and I would tell her that we are having more than 16,000 software designers in the company, she would ask me, so what is that? A web designer, most probably already fading out, is a job that didn't exist 10 years ago. And that's also something that we have to understand. The world is changing, digitization is going to make an input and having a big impact on everything that is us. And so we're gonna see and find out what is actually coming up. And also that is just another trigger why careers don't look like that. By the way, they have never looked like that, but that's always the strong belief. And there's one very important thing that Michelangelo said at the age of, what was it, 87. And by the time that Michelangelo was alive, 87 was already pretty old. And he said that very important one thing. He said, I am still learning. And that's what I would like every one of us to keep with you and to take out with everything that you're doing. Never stop learning. Because the world is changing constantly. And with the digitization, the world is changing even faster. And the ones that say, I've know it all, I don't have to learn anything anymore, are the first ones, that's my strong belief, that are going to fail. So please remember that and enjoy your next stage. Thank you. Dear students, dear graduates, I've heard you are going to party tonight. May the next song help to bring you in the right mood. Tobt sie ein Orkan wie beim Sturm der Ozean. Hoppla, das ist mein Blut. Meine Glut war dein Ventil, wenn mir einer heut gefiel. Hoppla, der hätte es gut. Heute Abend lade ich mir die Liebe ein. Heute will ich glücklich sein, die ganze Nacht. Es gibt sonst nichts, was ich heute wissen will, weil ich nur küssen will, die ganze Nacht. Oh, da hat mir ein Mund die Seligkeit und Vergessenheit gebracht. Und lade ich mir heute die Liebe ein, heute will ich glücklich sein, die ganze Nacht. Weil mir diese Leidenschaft immer wieder Freuden schafft. Hoppla, darum hab ich's gern. Ich hab niemals No gesagt, denn mein Typ ist sehr gefragt. Hoppla, von vielen Herren. Heute Abend lade ich mir die Liebe ein. Heute will ich glücklich sein, die ganze Nacht. Es gibt sonst nichts, was ich heute wissen will, weil ich nur küssen will, die ganze Nacht. Oh, Tate mir ein Mann, die Seligkeit und Vergessenheit gebracht. Lade ich mir heute die Liebe ein. Heute will ich glücklich sein, die ganze Nacht. Liebe ein. Glücklich sein, die ganze Nacht. Wissen wir? Küssen wir die ganze Nacht. Oh, tat mir ein Mund die Seligkeit und vergessen hat gebracht. Lade ich mir heute die Liebe ein. Heute will ich glücklich sein, die ganze Nacht. Seligkeit und vergessen hat gebracht, lade ich mir heute die Liebe ein. Heute will ich glücklich sein, die ganze Nacht. Thank you very much.
Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Arn Mr. Arnheiner, Ms. Römmele, who is not here today, Ms. Kugel, academic staff, friends, family. So I'm the, welcome to my fellow students and uh, graduates. So it's my turn today, selected to speak on behalf of the 21 graduates sitting down there. So um, I think it's my last deliverable for my career here at Hurti. I haven't visited the speech writing seminar, so maybe if I'm doing this successful, I get another piece of paper. So Ms. Kugel had some figures. I also have some figures. Uh, at this special day, I think uh, maybe the most important day for us uh, during the whole last two to three years. So these 21 students, including me, we have spent 1,128 days at the school, have gained 1,440 ECTs, visited 340 84 classes, and have written 288 papers and one master thesis. This sums up to 1.5 million words, and today we're standing here to receive one piece of paper. So maybe you will ask, who are these people signing up for an executive MPA program, taking up the challenge of another academic degree, uh, writing papers during nights and weekends, traveling to Berlin the, every other week and month? So one would say, they must have a very boring normal life that they just take on these kind of endeavors. Behavioral scientists would say they are sensation seekers looking for additional spice in their lives. And maybe it's, it's, it's a bit like this, this is the Hurti spice we were looking for. Um, Hurtians or EMPA students are not hesitating walking the extra mile in the middle of the rush hour of life between 30 and 40 uh, to meet their pairs and discuss, exchange ideas uh, about today's problems. And this is actually what Hurti is about. It's about its people. It's about the different cultures coming together from different branches, from different cultures and disciplines to discuss and exchange ideas and opinions. And I think this is what we enjoyed most during the last years here at the Hurti School and what is the real added value coming, coming to this school. One word to our lectures. Um, I hope you have learned from us. We appreciate that you respected us as grown-ups, as people who could also contribute with our knowledge from our institutions, our professional backgrounds. And I think that was also one, one experience that, that remains with us. It's the style of teaching at Hurti. I think that's important also for our incoming students. It's more an exchange in a discussion, in an equal way, equal way of, uh, of dealing with each other. So thank you very much for this from, from the cohort. We have made a little summary of, of what people think about um, their impression from after two, three years um, being at Hurti, and I'm summing this up with some, some, some quick words. Um, it's the mix that made it. Governance, public management, and economics. It's the group work that made it. It's the massive amount of coffee consumption that made it. It's the pretzels and the red sofa room that made it. It's the forgotten keys and waiting outside class, waiting to be let in, that made it. It's the train ride between Berlin and Mainz that made it. And, mostly, it's the community and the friendship that made it. So let me get to the little uh, statistics I've prepared for this speech, and I think they are also important for our incoming students. Uh, so we can ensure you that even when you're joining Hurti School, your normal life will continue, and that pretty fast. For Google also said that life will goes on, goes on and can change in two years, to can be totally different. And I think for many of us, that also is the place. So only among the 21 graduating this year, four children have been born. And I think that's a fruitful masterclass. I mean, that's, that's another success story for Hurti School. Come to Hurti, gain friends and offspring. <laughs> so furthermore, 
We have more than seven job moves and career advancements. We have one hurty couple, or let's say hurty affair. <laughs> and I'm not aware of any divorce or breakup. So this is also another success. And when I'm just talking about families and private life, there's one special group of people who carries a huge responsibility why we are all sitting here today, at least the graduates, and that is our families, our children, our partners, because you understood what we are doing. We thank you for your patience, your tolerance, and your support. I mean, now we are done with it, we are back, and uh, fully to your responsibility. Secondly, it's our employers. Our employers have supported us, not only with sometimes financial means and covering travel costs, but also, also understanding guidance, doing master theses, tolerance, and I think that's also on behalf of the graduates. Thank you very much for this. Otherwise, it would for many of us not be possible to to do this master. Maybe in, uh, for the incomings as well, there are also some people at Hurti who make your life very, very easy, and without them, your survival at Hurti would not be guaranteed. It's Hanneli Epting, Robert Tech, and Julia McCarthy from the EMPA Executive Office. Thank you very much for your support. You can call them 24 hours, seven days a week, discussing anything you want with them. They always have an open ear for you. And uh, I think on behalf also from all of us, thank you very, very much for that. Maybe you stand up so everyone can see your faces. I'm already coming to the end of my my little intervention, um, my dear fellows, some, some years ago we came to Hurti and we all shared the same concerns about the public sector. And Hurti does teach you some tools and instruments to solve these kind of problems. But um, it's rather the way of thinking and the perspective that you learn at Hurti. And that's the most important thing. Let me cite one of my fellow graduates, Ulrike, who said, it's the way we look at things that makes us more clever for our jobs, for our lives in future. Now there are no giants out there anymore. Thank you very much, my dear fellows. Congratulations. Welcome back to normal life again. Thank you. Thank you very much, Marius, for those very warm words and inspiring words. Um, ladies and gentlemen, honoured guests, it's my privilege today to say a few words of thanks and celebration to the EMPA students who are graduating today, as well as to welcome an impressive new EMPA cohort. Those of us in the faculty who teach every week across our programmes know it's our job to try our best we can to equip our students with new skills and new knowledge. There is though something special about the MPA, which Marius also mentioned, which is hopefully you've learned from us, but we've also learned that day to day, class to class, we also learn so much from you. As a group with years of experience in different areas of public policy, you're the students who put our sometimes slightly fuzzy and theoretical ideas and methods to the real test. You refine our knowledge of the outside world and you share with us and each other your experience of how organizations adapt and how they evolve. You have this thirst for knowledge, but you also have a keen sense of responsibility for the world around you. You want to share your experiences, but also to listen and to learn from the lessons of your fellow students and also from us in the faculty. I therefore want to congratulate you, as Dean Anahar did, not just on completing a demanding program, but also for contributing so much to the intellectual and social life of the Hearty School. 
We've been lucky to teach what is a very talented bunch. So among today's graduating class are students who've been senior banking advisors in East and West Africa, who've been heads of office in international organizations like the UNDP and the OSCE. We have senior officers in major government departments in Germany, in Australia, and in Colombia. We have people who've been instrumental in driving organizational change in the private and third sectors and establishing new institutions. And I mention these examples not to single them out or because they're unusual, but actually because they're typical of the extraordinary depth of experience and public service commitment that mark out the EMPA um, program. The sacrifices that you have made in the name of education should not be underestimated. So we have graduates today who've come from as far away as India, Nigeria, the US, Australia, and Brazil to come and study with us. We also wel welcome incoming graduates who are currently now going to be studying this program while working full time in Bogota, New York, Moscow, Accra, and many other corners of Europe and the world. So the bad news is the incredible time commitment. You'll have to give scribbling last minute notes on airplanes, that's the difficult part. The good news is you'll definitely have enough air miles for some weekend trips to visit your new colleagues in some pretty neat places after you've completed this program. Today we welcome 23 new participants from 12 different countries. Their backgrounds illustrate how truly international and intersexual the EMP program has become. 11 of them come from public administration throughout Europe and the world, seven from international organizations, and five from the nonprofit and private sectors. You'll have the chance to study in the next few years topics and issues that are at the forefront of current debates and at the cutting edge of the contemporary social sciences. From digital participation to anti-corruption, conflict management, social innovation, leadership, and experimental policy evaluation. You will study things that, well, that experimental policy evaluation course comes to mind, an academic lawyer like me could never hope to master or understand. You'll write master's thesis that, like those of our graduating students, find new ways to grapple with some of the most intractable issues in modern public policy, as we saw yesterday in our poster session. Finally, in doing this, again, as Marius has mentioned, you'll have the support of a committed and talented EMPA team in Hanley, Robert, and Juliana, dedicated to helping you make the most out of the hearty experience and who've been such a support to the existing cohort. I know that we in the faculty are looking forward to working with you closely in the years to come. I wish you every success on the road to your degree. The world of public policy today is not an easy place, so we really need you, just as we need the current graduates. But on that note, I think it's time to move on to the real and main order of business, which is the conferment of the EMP degrees. And I'd like to ask Dean Iyer and Hire onto the stage for the conferment ceremony. Okay, so I'm going to read out the names in alphabetical order, and if the graduates would like to come up to the stage as I read the names. Firstly, Julika Marin Breer. Lars Buchner. Uh, Christian Drosch. Rika Friedrich. <laughs> Frau Sophie Fussers. <laughs> 
Philip Hulsebush. Daniel Juncker. Dana Kikic. Julia Mager. Carol McCoskey. Jan Nissen. <laughs> Katy Novo Cardoso. Katrin Otto. <laughs> Carla Salgado. Catherine Schemperg. <laughs> Gabriela Guntank. And finally, Marius Thomas Walter. Can we ask Ms. Google to come up for a, a quick group photo and then uh, we continue?
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I think we um, have to thank again and congratulate our graduates, and we have to thank uh, Janina Kugel for a very inspiring uh, commencement speech, and of course, um, Marius for his uh, really encouraging and um, enthusiastic words about the EMPA uh, program. Uh, we, before we come to uh, a close, I would like to, uh, to th first of all thank you, the audience, uh, for joining us here today. And a really a very, very special thanks also to our communication team, who has been working very, very hard to make this uh, event such a great success. What we'll do now is um, show a short video. Right? Um, a video to welcome and introduce our incoming students from the various uh, programs. So I'd like the team back there to kick off the movie. I think it was a very, I hadn't seen this uh, video, but uh, it's really good, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> kind of makes you want to come here <laughs> and be part of the Hurti community. So without further ado, let me declare open uh, the academic year 2016, 2017. May it be a fruitful one, may it be exciting and productive to all of you. Thanks for coming today and we will have a reception down on the first floor and hope to see you there. Congratulations again, graduates. Thank you.